So good afternoon, everybody. So I wanted to introduce today our research project in Austria with the name Unlocking the Secrets of Cremated Human Remains, which is managed by Katharina Rebe Salisbury. The aim of the project is to learn more about the expansion of the Urnfield culture, which spans from the late Bronze Age to the early Iron Age in Austria, and to obtain as much information as possible from prehistoric cremated remains. Burial practices significantly changed in the Bronze Age in Central Europe. In the early Bronze Age, inhumations in crouched position with a gendered placement were usual. Typically, males and females were placed with their heads in opposite directions, but all individuals facing into the same direction. In the Middle Bronze Age, there was a transition of the burial practices to tumuli, but already cremation barriers can be sparsely seen until cremations became the dominant burial type in the late Bronze Age, which with large cemeteries of up to several hundreds of individuals, which proceeded to the Iron Age. If we take a quick schematic look at the burial practices over time in Central Europe, we see a small proportions of cremations in the late Neolithic and almost no cremations in the early Bronze Age. During the Middle Bronze Age, the proportion of cremations increases, with cremation becoming the exclusive formal burial rite in the Late Bronze Age. In the Early Iron Age, inhumations are gradually reintroduced, becoming more common at the Hallstatt Latin transition. During Middle Latin, cremations become more common again, and towards the end of the Iron Age, before the Roman occupation, funerary rites become archaeologically invisible. This means that for about one millennium in later European prehistory, cremations are more or less our primary source about the human body and people life histories. Unfortunately, cremations are often underappreciated in the archaeological and anthropological community because lots of time and effort is needed to come to the simplest conclusions. Recently, however, methodologies have advanced, so we are now in the position to make the most of the information that is captured in human cremated remains. For the Unlocking Secrets project, we built on the thousands of graves that were excavated during rescue excavations in the Austrian Dreisen Valley in the 1980s and 90s. The Dreisen Valley spans from the city of St. Pölten to the Danube River, approximately 50 kilometers west of Vienna and has been a favorite location for prehistoric people over millennia. Fertile farmlands and ideal settlement conditions along the gravel terraces provided ideal conditions for prehistoric people. The Dreisen Valley further acts as a connector and gatekeeper to the raw material resources at the foothills of the Alps. The rich, multi-period archaeological landscape is an ideal starting point for our investigations. The aim of this project is to gain insight into temporality, gendered mobility, and family relations in late Bronze Age and early Iron Age Austria, asking some specific questions. Was the change of burial rights at the onset of the late Bronze Age a local development, or was it triggered by newcomers? Did the deposition of cremated human bones take place directly after the cremation, or can we identify time gaps that suggest bone corrosion? Can we detect gendered patterns of mobility and migration? And did co-buried individuals grow up in the same or in different environments? We are applying a number of scientific methods to get the maximum amount of information from cremated human remains. We combine a state-of-the-art osteological analysis with tooth cementum annulation, strontium isotope analysis of 500 samples from human remains and comparative plant samples give us insights into mobility. We performed a large amount of radiocarbon dates directly from cremated remains, and we analyzed gender, age, and status based on grave goods. Data from strontium isotope analysis is instrumental to detect individuals who migrated to the Dreisen Valley. Different kinds of soil include various strontium isotope ratios, which are incorporated by plants. The plants are eaten by animals, and strontium becomes part of our, of our bones and teeth for diet. Isotope ratios of human tissue compared to the surrounding environment indicate locals and non-locals. A few years ago, it has been demonstrated uh, that cremated remains preserve strontium isotope ratios 
uh, just as well as dental enamel. In addition, human bone remodels during lifetime and turnover rates vary within the body. So we can take different samples of the human skeletons uh, to check whether one individual has changed its residence during lifetime. For example, if we sample the petrous bone, the bone around our inner ear, this provides us a signal from around birth. The femur will give us a signal from the last 20 years in the life of a person. And we want to receive a short-term signal. The ribs are remodeling each two to three years. The four cemeteries, Getzersdorf, Inzersdorf, Franzhausen Kokoron, and Statzendorf, encompass a total of 1,065 graves and have been selected to cover the entire time period from the beginning of the Urnfield phenomenon around 1300 BC to the early Iron Age at around 600 BC in one single region. It is quite astonishing that there are almost no published C14 dates from this period at the Dreisen Valley. So this is a good opportunity to tie the type of chronology to absolute dates. The graves of Getzersdorf are amongst the earliest Urnfield period graves in the region. The graves are predominantly rectangular and oval shaped, mimicking the size of a human body, with the cremated remains deposited in the heap or scattered over the base. The preservation of some of the funerary ideas of the preceding Middle Bronze Age, which still used, uh, which still practiced inhumations, makes Getzersdorf the ideal case study to investigate whether local traditions transformed or cremations were brought by foreigners to this region. Our first test case, test case study was Inzersdorf. The cemetery includes a total of 273 graves, scattered cremation and urn barriers, deposited from around 1200 to 950 BC. In addition to simple round grave bits, this cemetery includes body-shaped graves lined with stones and graves with a rectangular floor plan. Squares and sh circular shallow ditches have been recorded as grave enclosures. We analyzed around 120 strontium samples from Inzersdorf. In the results, you can see that female values are much more variable than male values, and two outliers are visible, one at the bottom range and one at the top range. And interestingly, both outliers are subadults. So let's have a closer look at the graves. The two outliers are amongst the earliest from the cemetery. Grave 88 is a single burial of a three to nine year old child deposited in a body safe sized grave pit with a few pieces of jewelry and pottery. This grave was heavily disturbed by modern plowing. One is of the, one of the very earliest graves of Inzersdorf, which might indicate the founding phase of the cemetery by newcomers in this region. The other outlier is a three to nine year old from a double burial, where the other individual was an adult male, which is, which was, uh, who was within the local range. The non-local was associated with a bronze casting mold, perhaps pointing to a metal related trading network. Through the social mechanisms of apprenticeships or marriage, migration may have played a role in the knowledge transfer. Franzhausen Kokoron is situated only four kilometers of, uh, north of Inzersdorf and comprises 403 cremation graves. The cemetery dates later within the Late Bronze Age, approximately 150 to 800 BC. An online publication of the context and finds are already available. For the strontium isotope analysis, we took 168 data points from 404 graves, pretty much all that was possible. And we see a slightly wider range than in Inzersdorf. This time, no outlier in the lower ranges, but again, some individuals plotting into the top ranges. However, this matched the ranges discovered at other sites in, in, in the Dreisen Valley. In terms of gendered mobility, the top outliers are again a child and a in females, but there are a lot more males in the top ranges in comparison to Inzersdorf. Another child grave drew our attention because of the feeding vessel found in one of the cremation graves. 
The vessels that, that were used to feed children were analyzed for our baby bottle project, where we used organic residue analysis to understand which substances were fed to the children. Here, the cremated remains of an infant were found with a feeding vessel in the urn. The child was half a year to approximately three years at, at age of death. We did not recover any organic residue from the feeding vessel. And it looks like this one had not been used. It might have been included as a symbolic grave gift. The isotope, the isotopes of the organic, um, uh, of the organic molecules recovered from the ceramic matrix of other vessels of the period clearly plot in the ruminant diary range. So we are confident that the vessels indeed contained the milk of cows, sheep, and goat and were used to feed children. The last of the case study we used to complete the chronological sequence is Statzendorf. The occupation of the cemetery of Statzendorf began at the late Bronze Age, early Iron Age transition and covered predominantly the early phase of the early Iron Age, around 800 to 600 BC. This was an antiquarian excavation, but relatively well documented for the time. Unfortunately, it had very few preserved cremations, but it produced a famous vessel that proves that pots sometimes threw a flex. There are cremations and inhumations present at Schatzendorf, and we have so far analyzed only the cremations. The inhumations will follow in January. Most of the 370 burials were cremations placed in urns or directly on the soil of the grave, but about 10% of them were inhumations. Unfortunately, only 25 skeletons and 16 assemblages of burnt bones were kept during the excavation, and often only a few bone gram fragments were recovered from most cremation burials. Furthermore, many uh, of these uh, recovered cremated remains were lost when the Archaeological Institute in, in Vienna moved a few years ago. Consequently, a detailed anthropological analysis of the human cremated remains was not possible. Additionally, many bone fragments were, recovered, were covered with varnish, which makes isotope analysis not reliable. So, unfortunately, we ended up with just four suitable cases for strontium isotope analysis. To actually understand where people source the diet, we need to establish a map of bioavailable strontium from, for the Streisand Valley in the areas they most likely interacted with. On this map, you can see the marked locations of comparative plant samples in and around the Streisand Valley. Looking at the distribution of the message strontium values of the deceased, most individuals were local, even in the oldest cemetery, Getzelsdorf which is visible here. Statistically, there are some outliers in the sites franzhausen Kokoron in Inzersdorf. Um, uh, however, the, most of the plot into the local ranges of the comparative plant samples here. So we, have, we still have to distangle uh, the, the strontium values of the different geologists to completely understand which people migrated to the Dreisen Valley and who didn't. So currently at this point, one can only say that the lower outlier in Inzersdorf is a true migrant to the Dreisen Valley. Noticeable is, is that the samples of Stadzendorf, the early Iron Age sites, plot slightly different in comparison to the other sites. You can see it here in this graph. This is also clearly visible in the geological map from the Dreisen Valley. Uh, the ge ge geological zones are very variable at in short distances. Most of the cemeteries are located within the, uh, the valley next to the river. And Stadzendorf, the early Iron Age site, lo is located slightly on the hills in a different geological zone. Uh, yeah. Uh, settlements have not recovered in the Dreisen Valley. So we do not completely know, uh, know in which area the valley the people lived. 
based on the strontium values and the diverse landscape, one can assume that the cemeteries, the settlements and the farmlands uh, were close together and only single individuals may have been migrated to this area. In terms of gendered mobility, always subadult individuals and female individuals were found in the low and top ranges of strontium values. This suggests that already children were sent away. In terms of gendered mobility, females traveled much more frequently than males, which was also clearly visible in the strontium values. One interpretation could be that they were sent away to friends and neighbors for marriage. However, females likely also were in the position to transfer know-how and techniques between different communities in Central Europe. Currently, we're still performing the data analysis, so we are looking forward for more detailed results in the early future. Thank you.